Well, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, this is sorry, this is not at all what I expected to happen today. <laughs> uh, I expected to be grilled by Cheryl Jan, which is a normal course of activity for me. Obviously, my staff went rogue while I was away for the last couple of days and in, invited all you to be here with me, so I'm very grateful uh, for that. Um, today is really a, an opportunity for me to say thank you. It is less, it is, I'm going to warn you, it is less about how we got here, more about the fact we are here and how much it means to me to have the chance uh, to thank the people who have made this opportunity possible for me. I want to begin by acknowledging the hundreds of texts and phone calls and flowers and treats and all the things that have arrived over the last few days. Um, I want you to know that, and I can tell you, they came from all over the community, the province, and beyond. And they came from people of a variety of political uh, backgrounds and beliefs. And that means a lot to me. That is a, very important to me. Um, it frankly has been quite overwhelming uh, to feel the kind of support that I have over the last number of days and obviously years. And I want you to know how helpful that has been as I have uh, sorted out what steps I should take. So I do want to begin by recognizing that we are on the traditional territory of the Klaitli Tanay. And I want to recognize in particular uh, the Klaitli Chief, Chief Logan, and Council, and also of course the uh, Elder Darlene McIntosh, Chancellor of our University. And I'm so grateful for their leadership. Uh, women showing uh, the province how incredibly exceptional they are. And so I'm deeply grateful to them for the relationships, the friendships that we have built. That work is important and it needs to continue. So I hope that you will share with Chief Logan, uh, Chancellor McIntosh, that I am so grateful for their friendship and their leadership. So this morning, I sent a text to my grandsons, and I said to them, yes, they do text with their grandmother from time to time, <laughs> <laughs> and I sent them a text, and what I said to them was, today we start a new chapter. You start a new school year. One of you starts a new school. And I said to them, I want you to think about something that has been shared with me over the course of my career. And that is, be your best self and work hard, because it will make a difference. So that was our text this morning. Um, so apparently they didn't get it right on time because of the new, you can't have your cell phone rule. <laughs> but I'm sure they will have read it uh, by now. Good. And the fact that you're skipping out of school on day one is probably not a good thing. But today it is, it's OK, good, because today it's grandma approved. Um, I can tell you that while we were away for the last few days, keeping a promise that I had made to the boys and a tradition that we have each summer, um, I can tell you it was pretty tough. Um, our plane flight left just hours after I got the phone call. And I thought to myself, well, this is going to be an adventure. But they were fantastic. And the one thing I have to say to them, though, is that over the course of several days, they kept saying to me, trying very hard to get grandma to go on numerous roller coasters with them. <laughs> and I looked at them and I said with all that I could muster, I want to assure you boys, there is no need for me to go on a roller coaster. I am on the longest roller coaster ride of my life. <laughs> So, I didn't need the actual one, I was experiencing it. So I want you to know how grateful I am for a family that has walked this journey with me. Because over the course of time, I have missed birthdays, anniversaries, sporting competitions, school presentations, the list is long. And I've never been made to feel badly about that. Always supported. And in fact, usually after the event, I would get pictures. 
and a summary of what happened. Didn't replace not being there, but it helped me have the ability and the freedom to do the job that I felt that I had been called to be. So, I promised myself there would be no ugly cries during this, uh, this and I'm going to try to stick to that, but Chris and Christina, thank you for your wise counsel, for being there. I literally could not have done this without you. And my staff, what can I say? You don't get to do this job. I don't even know where they are. I literally cannot see them because I have reading glasses on. Oh, there's Dorothy. And Kev, I don't know where he is. He's probably taking pictures or notes or something. But uh, you don't get to do this job without amazing people. And many of you in leadership roles know exactly what that means. Um, Dorothy, Kevin, and Tegan here in Prince George. Tegan, you're here. I was worried you might not because she usually works in my office on Wednesdays. Tegan is an accomplished Special Olympian that I adore. She is a huge part of our team. And, and uh, I'm going to miss seeing her every Wednesday morning, but I'm really glad you're here, Tegan. And Kevin is somewhere here as well. And Shala, of course, and Victoria. They are my work family. And I want all of you to know that they have been on that roller coaster with me. I am so thankful for the people that work with me. They are people of integrity, compassion, and skill. And I want to say this to you, I will do everything I can to make sure that you have a plan in place as well and that you are taken care of the way that you should be. <laughs> to the team in Victoria that supported me during my time as an MLA and especially when I was leader of the opposition, you are simply the best. I will miss our policy discussions and our strategizing and our friendships that we have developed over the course of my time as an MLA. Uh, we used to get razzed quite significantly, especially when we became opposition, because our team of people was so small. And in fact, I think the NDP referred to our team as the kids in the basement. Um, and I want you to know the kids in the basement are exceptional. They deserve to land well. And again, I will work as hard as I can to make sure that the people who were as surprised by this as I was are taken care of. That is our responsibility, and that's something that I am committed to doing. <laughs> many of you in this room, and many not in the room, have been there for me. Not just in these last few days, but some of you since the beginning of my career. I want you to know how humbling it is to have people believe in you, to work for you, to donate money, to knock on doors, make phone calls, hundreds of calls, and be there at the end of that long day with a word of encouragement or a hug. Simply put, it is people like you that make this job possible. Anyone in this room who has put their name on a ballot knows the challenges, the joys, the personal sacrifices, the personal criticism that this job or a job like it brings. I am a strong believer in the power of team. The ability for people to set aside partisan views, to do what is in the best interest of our mutual constituents is critical. We have seen some progress on that front, especially in the beloved I'll get it, <laughs> Robson Valley region. I am so proud of the approach we took in Valemount, the team Valemount approach. Stepping up, setting aside our differences, and saying together, no matter what our political views or beliefs or where we sit on the spectrum, we need to put our constituents first. And I'm so very grateful to the people of the Robson Valley, and I'm so thankful to everyone here who decides to put their name on a ballot and serve the public. It is not easy, and I'm very grateful for the way that we have found a way to constructively work with one another. It has, 
the people of Prince George, wow. It has been an honor to serve as the MLA for Prince George Vailmont. And honestly, it's going to take me a while not to introduce myself as, hi, I'm Shirley Bond, the MLA for Prince George Vailmount. <laughs> because it has helped shape the person that I am and define who I am. The faith that was placed in me, sending me to Victoria multiple times, drove me to be fierce on your behalf. I think Neil Godboot said it best, although I hate to admit it. <laughs> he said it best one day when he wrote an article that said, many of you in Prince George will know her as a loving grandmother, evidenced here. <laughs> but Lord help you if you have to sit across from her in the legislature. <laughs> And I remember reading that, and at first I thought, wow, I'm not sure I'd like that. But then I thought, yeah, I actually do. So, because that is really who I, I am. Uh, I adore my family. I cherish them. But I also know that I had a job to do in Victoria. And it did involve being fierce, and it may, involve, may have involved a little bit of finger pointing, as I am well known for. So, I want you to know, to the people of Prince George, that I tried my best to never forget why I was in Victoria, and more importantly, who sent me there. I have a deep love for where we live and the people who live here. And whether you live in Prince George or Hickson, Dome Creek, Crescent Spur, McBride, Dunster, Tijon, Tijon Vailmount, or Mount Robson, you have taught me about why we live in the best part of British Columbia, and I am eternally grateful. And while my time as your MLA will end in 18 or so days, I still have a ton of work to do before then. I intend to finish well, with many events and jobs to be done in the next few weeks. So the work isn't finished yet, and I will continue to work as hard as I possibly can. And I'm sure that Dorothy, Kevin, and Tegan are just thrilled to hear that this morning. This was not how I envisioned my career ending. I honestly thought I would choose the timing, or the electorate would. That's how it works. But we are where we are. And in order for me to be true to my principles and values, loyalty, chief among them, my family and I have made the difficult decision that we have. Many have said to me, and I never thought about it at the time, many have said to me that I am loyal to a fault. Perhaps that was more accurate than I considered when I heard that. It is hard to imagine that is le it is less than a week ago that my team and I were knocking on doors making phone calls, raising money, talking to constituents, preparing a sign plan, and yes, we have hundreds of signs ready to go. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your continuous hard work, and I want you to know how sorry I am that you were as surprised as I was. In the, at the way our campaign ended. I am sorry. I will continue to try and answer your questions, as I always have, as we all work our way through this. Make no mistake about it. There are people who are very happy that my career is ending. And there are those of you who know how much I have poured my heart and soul into this job. But, this I know. Prince George Vailmount deserves an MLA that is going to step up, speak up, and be fierce. We need those voices now more than ever. We need to make sure that there is a positive way and innovative ways 
to fix a broken healthcare system, support our overworked and undervalued healthcare professionals. It's hard for me to speak to the ones that I see in this room. I want you to know I will not stop fighting for you, whatever my path looks like moving forward. I care about you and I thank you every single day for holding the healthcare system together the way that you have. So we have to work hard to fix and end the revolving door in the justice system, to provide treatment and recovery for those who desperately need it, to support and care for our seniors in the way they deserve it. I want you to know that right up until a week ago, I was working on policies and plans to lay out that would better care for seniors in this province. Um, and that won't, work won't end either. I will find a way to continue to be a voice, to speak up on their behalf. They deserve so much better than they are receiving today in this province. And of course, of course, we need to build the tower now. And it must include a helipad, Ted. <laughs> so in the days ahead, what I ask of you, ask the hard questions. Demand policies and platforms that will prioritize the needs of our community and our region. Ask those questions. Demand to know where we fit in policies and platforms because our constituents deserve nothing less than that. I grappled with the decision about running in this election in the first place. And then I was convinced that it was important that we needed to have leadership and experience in this region. So I agreed. Though my family, specifically my daughter-in-law, made it very clear at that time that this would be the last race. Because, and I quote, they wanted some grandma left at the end of this. <laughs> you remember saying that? <laughs> so, as I reminded the boys this morning, it is, important, import, it is important to always be your best self. And for me and my family, that means the time has come to move on to the next chapter. But rest assured, there is much work yet to be done, and I, am not one to sit on the sidelines. For now, a busy few weeks as the MLA for Prince George Valemount, the very proud MLA for Prince George Valemount, then some rest and time with the people I cherish most. Thank you for being here today. It was a surprise to see you all. It's kind of like those surprise parties that you're never really sure of and you don't think you really want and then you're here and all of that. Thank you so much for being here today. And I want you to know that it has been the honor of my life to be the MLA for Prince George Vamo. I know the media are going to want me to ask some questions. I don't, I'm going to sort of take it off to the side because those are going to be the, probably the political questions. But um, thank you for being here. And uh, I look forward to seeing you out and, out and about. I get to see more hockey games and be involved in all kinds of things that I adore in this community. So, and I've got a busy few weeks ahead. So today is uh, the uh, not quite last phase of my job. And I have lots of work to do. So. Thank you, and I'll just ask the media if they want to come up front. And the rest of you, don't leave before I get a chance to see some of you. And 
Um, I'm so grateful that you took time to be here today, even though it surprised the daylights right out of me. <laughs> so um, anyway, thank you for your time. Okay. You know, I, my day today is really about uh, my family and I. I think that what I want, uh, you know, everyone to understand is how important this part of British Columbia is. And I want to see reflected in the policies and platforms of whatever parties there are uh, a priority for this part of the province. That has been the goal in my career. It is why I agreed to run again, because I wanted to see the tower built at UHNBC. So um, I want to see reflected in the, the plans and, and uh, uh, platforms. I want to see an emphasis on Northern British Columbia. But I am deeply concerned about the state of British Columbia, and I do think that you know we, we need to realize that we have a, health, a crisis in health care, we have a crisis in justice, we have a, you know, we just have multiple things happening in our province. So I do think we need an alternative to the NDP. But as I've said, my values and the things that I care about, um, I want to see reflected. And I think that British Columbians and Northern British Columbians deserve to see an emphasis on what matters most to us here in the North. And that's going to be my, uh, uh, that's what I'll certainly be looking for in the weeks ahead. BC Conservatives. Pardon me? Would you have run for the BC Conservatives? Uh, you know, I I have come to a place where uh, this decision uh, was made the, the moment that I received the phone call, and I would not have changed that. What was it about the Conservative platform that you just couldn't agree with? Well, it's not that at all. I'm even, I had to decide what was best for my family and for me at this stage of my career. Um, and, and I just made the choice that, uh, you know, from my perspective, I've had the honor of a lifetime being the MLA for Prince George Valemount. I needed to, uh, you know, I spent more than two decades being part of a large coalition party. And when, you know, when Kevin Falcon decided that our campaign as a party would end, um, it was time for me to think about what my path was and my family and I decided it was best for me to be my best self and uh, find other ways to serve the people of uh, Northern British Columbia. Did a run as an independent ever cross your mind? You know, it's been very interesting. I have received calls. Uh, there are people who wanted to start a petition to have me run as an independ independent. I have received calls from other parties. Um, and, you know, this really is a, a personal choice, a choice of my family and I. Uh, running as an independent is a tough thing to do. Um, it may well hold significance in this legislature, depending upon what the electoral outcomes are. But I think it's fair to say that I, as I said in my remarks, I grappled with running again in the first place. I was convinced to run again because of the need to have experience and leadership as part of the team here in the North. And uh, so when I got the call last week, I think it was quite clear to me that it was time for me to make this decision. What was the call? What did, who called you? What did they say? Um, I received a, a call uh, just very uh, shortly before uh, well, well, let's be clear. Rumors had started much earlier in the day, and I was already receiving texts from people saying, how are you doing? What's happening? Um, I was completely unaware of what was going on. I was busy working, and uh, I received a call from Kevin Falcon telling me that uh, he had decided to stand down the party in terms of an electoral campaign, um, and that uh, he would be uh, going uh, forward publicly very shortly. What was your reaction to that? Well, I have to admit, it was one of shock, to be honest. And I was in my office, and you can imagine how it impacted my staff as well. Um, because decisions like that don't just impact the elected person. They impact all of us, our donors, our supporters, our sponsors, our door knockers, and our staff, who, who I, uh, I cherish. So um, it was a tough morning. Any message for Kevin Falcon? Did he do the right thing? You know, I, I truly do believe that uh, Kevin Falcon loves British Columbia. I, I believe that, you know, he, he wants what's best for this province. And I do believe that that is what drove the decision. I think the, 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 the part that I still am working to, uh, to grapple with is, is the how. Um, I understand you can't have those discussions in public, but there are a lot of people whose lives changed um, in an instant. 
And, you know, people have said to me, well, that's politics and you should understand that. Um, I, I also uh, care about people who have invested their lives and their time and their effort and their money in supporting this party. Uh, so I think, you know, that, that side of this equation probably hasn't been um, discussed as much as it, it should be. Would you vote for the BC Conservatives? Look, I'm going to vote for who I think will represent Prince George Valemount in the way that I described today, by being fierce and speaking up and stepping up. And make no mistake about it, I am a fiscal conservative. I have always described myself as a fiscal conservative with a social conscience. So, you know, I think people are pretty clear about where I stand on the political spectrum. But I'm also going to ask those hard questions. Where does the North stand? What is your view in terms of UHNBC? What are we going to do about the significant challenges we have in our city? All of those things um, matter to me. So, you know, I will, like every other voter, which is what I am now, um, will ask those questions. And, and uh, certainly, I do think we need an alternative to the current NDP government. About the Conservative position on climate change uh, and gender diversity. I think people who know me know me well enough to know that I believe climate change is real. I'm deeply concerned about that. My life, um, I will never forget in my life what a heat dome did in British Columbia. It killed over 600 frail elderly British Columbians. I believe in choice. I believe that uh, you know we need to treat those issues uh, respectfully. So I, what I want to encourage British Columbians to do is to have a healthy debate about those issues, ask the hard questions of candidates. But I'm clear. I've always been clear. Uh, I am, uh, you know, I am a fiscal conservative with a social conscience. I do believe we need an alternative to the NDP. Shirley, how disheartening has it been for you to see what's happened to the former Liberal Party? To go from BC United, you're still the opposition, to being a fringe party according to the polls. You wouldn't have, I mean, according to the polls, you would have got 10% of the vote. Well, let me tell you this. Um, polls are one thing. The only poll that matters is the one that takes place on election day. I was knocking on doors. We were making hundreds of phone calls. And, you know, certainly the polling numbers that I saw in my riding did not line up with what uh, the pollsters were talking about. And the outpouring of support that I have seen over the last week, I think, should demonstrate to many people that, you know, polls are one measure. Um, candidates, their credibility, their experience, their, uh, you know, their skill set matters as much. Um, you know, we are where we are. And my, my goal has and always will be to speak up on behalf of the people where I live. I love this place. I love this community. I absolutely love the Robson Valley region. Um, I have come to care about those people, <laughs> my constituents, in a way that I did not think was possible. And um, I will miss them. I will miss the stories, the relationships, the friendships. Um, I will still be a frequent visitor to the Robson Valley region. In fact, I'll be heading out there uh, later next week, I think it is. Um, so, you know, we are where we are. And what I want to say to the people of Prince George, the Robson Valley region today, is a heartfelt thank you for putting their faith and trust in me. And it motivated me to be fierce on their behalf. And that's what I expect of the next MLA for Prince George Valmont. You need to demonstrate you understand the importance of being sent to Victoria. It is an honor. I still, when I, it will be hard to make that last walk down the hallway as I go to empty out my office, but I can still remember walking in the halls at night thinking, I am so lucky to be in this place. It's a privilege to be there. And that drives your work ethic. And so I do think that um, being known as the hardest working MLA, um, which is not just here in Prince George, it is a fairly universal. People um, might not have agreed with my politics, they might not have agreed with decisions I made or even how I said things, but it's hard for them to argue with how hard I worked. That was my goal as an MLA. Would you have run for the BC Conservative? I didn't expect a call, and if a call had come, I would not have changed my decision. Shirley, uh, 21 years, you've been in one of the largest ridings in the province. Uh, you have the Robson Valley, which has very few voters down there, and yet you're down there constantly, and you care about the people, and you care about what's happening on there. Most politicians would stay where the votes are. Why? It's a very special place. 
And I think that the Robson Valley region and the people who live there describe the best of who we are in British Columbia. They are resilient and hardworking, and I have come to know their names and what they do, and I've had calls from many of them who um, I have now will be cherished friends. You know, when I think of people like Alice Olson, a 101-year-old veteran, whose birthday I got to attend when she turned 100 years old. I will never forget that day in my life, that she was surrounded by the people who loved her in the Robson Valley. And I was welcomed, and in fact, Alice said to me, Hi, Shirley. I'm s you came for my birthday? It was like, well, of course I came for your birthday. I look forward to... I just played bingo with Alice recently. And I think it's because I care so much that the people who live in the Robson Valley region are heard in Victoria. That Victoria knows where Tijon and Dunster and Dome Creek and Vale Mount and McBride and Crescent Spur, I want Victoria to know where they are. And I want Victoria to know the people that live there and the stories of their lives and how hard they work. And um, I will always cherish the relationships I have in the Robson Valley region. They mean the absolute world to me. It's one of the things I will miss most.